Hi there, and this is Kelly again, and I am here to do a take a look at the Midnight Magic uh, Tarot Deck of Mushrooms by Sarah Richard. I was actually at Books A Million, and I saw this, and I, they only had an open box left, and so I took it up there to purchase it, and then I was like, I counted the cards because I was like, ooh. Uh, on the thing, I'm like, I just need to count through these because this is open and I just want to make sure that they're all there. But it was the only one, so I went ahead and purchased it. So I have taken a look at it, and the artwork I thought was absolutely gorgeous. Um, so, but I, I just looked at it briefly in that sense of just counting it. So I really wasn't looking at them closely. Um, I looked at the Fool um, pretty close, but other than that, I haven't really looked at it. But this is, again, Midnight Magic, A Tarot Deck of Mushrooms by Sarah Richards. Uh, it's a Simon & Schuster deck. And on the back it says, Illuminate your path with the beautiful fungi of the forest and beyond. Discover Midnight Magic where you'll find 78 unique tarot cards rooted in the mysterious world of mushrooms. Based on the right of -Waite deck, these cards depict traditional tarot through fungi. From the authoritative red-capped fly agarit as the emperor to the brightly colored chicken of the woods as the impetuous fool and so many more created by renowned artist sarah richards this deck is filled with magical artwork reflecting the hidden and enchanting power of mushrooms so i have been obsessed over the last few years of the mycelial network or the mycelium, I don't know if you would say mycelial or mycelium um, network, which is this understanding that there are, especially with um, fungal organisms, fungus and things of that nature and mushrooms, that they're, um, they create this network that connects plants together um, in order to transfer water and nutrients and things like that. So I find it to be really fascinating as an understanding, right, of that we have of everything being interconnected energetically. Um, and so I just think it's an amazing thing. And it's something I keep wanting to really deep dive into um, and haven't, I've, I've, I've mini dived in multiple times, but I haven't done that really big deep dive. But anyway, so when I saw this, I was like, oh yeah, I need, especially the art looked so gorgeous. So I don't, I wonder, this is my wonderings as I start to look at the deck. My wonderings is whether or not this is one of those things that I'm going to say like an animal deck, that I wish it had just been an oracle deck with these gorgeous images simply because now the mushrooms can't just stand out as their own thing, right, and meaning what they mean, but they are now being fit into the system of tarot and vice versa. So I'm curious, just because, again, that happens a lot with animal decks for me, where I think, okay, that was good, that was pretty well done, but, or, and plant decks, actually. Um, one of the few ex exceptions to that is the Herb Crafters tarot, which I think did an amazing job. Um, one of the two exceptions for the animals would be the, um, uh, what is that called? Creatures of the Night Tarot by uh, MJ Cullinane, as well as the, uh, is it Spirit? No. Spirit Song Tarot. I always forget the name of that one. Uh, that was, she did amazing job of mixing an animal with the tarot with each one being supported by the other um, and with the um, really great keywords on that one. So, but, but most of the time, my point is, my rambling point is, most of the time with animal and plant decks, I, tarot decks, I tend to say it should have just been an oracle deck. So we're about to find out. I'm just saying what is my sort of bias as I go into this. Um, but here we have uh, that. We already talked about what that was. It's the same artist and the creator. Um, we have a, it says Adams Media. I guess I was wrong with that. Oh, it's Adams Media. Somewhere on here I saw Simon & Schuster. So it must be a subsidiary of Simon & Schuster. Anyways, that's, that, that, if that helps at all with your finding it. I, again, I picked it up at Books A Million. I'm assuming it would be on Amazon and those types of things as well. Um... 
The consumption of wild mushrooms that have been misidentified may cause serious illness or even death. Never under any circumstance should wild mushrooms be ingested that have not been professionally confirmed as edible. It is the sole responsible, responsibility of the reader to positively identify any wild mushrooms. That's a good idea. They're like, we are not taking responsibility for you uh, being a silly human and sticking things in your mouth when you don't know what it is. That's just, you know, that's on you. Um... So, um, we have our introduction. Mushrooms are a magical, ethereal part of nature. They offer potent medicine, culinary delicacy, mind-expanding experiences, folklore, and even solutions to some environmental problems. They are a special type of midnight magic we can all benefit from. Not quite in the animal kingdom, but not limited to the world of plants. Mushrooms exist in in between, like the veil fluttering between our earthly plane and spiritual one. That's interesting. I would have liked for them to explain why that is. I mean, I love this idea that the mushrooms are a liminal space between the animals and plants but what makes a mushroom if anybody knows put in the comments what makes a mushroom um something you know, i mean we know they're different than a plant they're not in the plant category they're in the fungi category mushrooms can light up the night with bioluminescence change their shapes or colors transform other materials around them and shift human consciousness that's true just imagine the lessons they can offer you through the insightful lens of a tarot deck i agree i think it's a great blending we're going to find out um so we have our how to read a tarot how to shuffle how to interpret some tips to that some spreads celtic cross <laughs> going for the the normal six of pentagrams um, and then it gets into the cars explaining the majors um, and then we have a beautiful color rendition of the card and then we have and both I did look at this in both the minors and obviously we have a smaller uh, card image on that but still gorgeous but it all of them have these three categories even the minors where we have a the name of the tarot card, the name of the mushroom, um, uh, something I guess about that mushroom, and then an upright meaning and a reverse meaning. So obviously we will read one of these so that you can see um, what you get with that. But that that imagery is so gorgeous that really caught my attention. Sarah Richards is an Eisner and Ringo Award nominated artist from New Hampshire. Her heart, her art is inspired by Art Nouveau, Art Deco, funerary imagery, and the natural world. Her creations tend to skew into the macabre and unknown with a balance of sweetness and sentimentality, honoring the Victorian era theme of memento mori. As a native of New Hampshire, Sarah grew up surrounded by trees and plenty of wild mushrooms. When not making art or writing, she's watch her, watching horror movies, cleaning forgotten gravestones with her mom. Oh, she sounds amazing. And collecting possibly haunted curios. I would like to be her friend from the 19th century. Her online gallery can be found at sarahrichards.com. I mean, her art looks amazing. Okay. So that's the guidebook. We'll keep that out and we'll read the Fool card. Oh, that's the Magician card. Of course, now I want to know about Little Bird of the Woods, so I think we'll read the Magician card. Um, so, okay, so we have our box. It's got a bit of an odd little spacer. Um, I'm, a, I'm kind of guessing maybe they just... Like, I don't think I will put that back into it, although I guess if you don't want your cards wiggling around, you probably should. So, kind of an odd little spacer there. There must have been an issue with the sizing, is my guess. Oh, no, I probably got these all whopper jaw. I tried to put them back in order because my counting them had them out of order, but we may get some oopses. Um, so, that's the box. The box itself is really nice. Uh, it's got the inner kind of uh, antique gold in there. Um, it's really beautiful and very sturdy. So it was just this uh, kind of odd little spacer there. But it does its trick. So that's what we have for that. Let's put that up out of the way. I'm a little concerned about the cardstock just because sometimes when it's not, you know, one of the big, bigger, like, deck creators... Um, or deck uh, companies, some of the, I find, sometimes the 
uh, some of the normal publishing houses that do books and stuff, sometimes I feel like they end up with papery kind of cardboard cardstock. And I kind of feel like it may be a little bit that way, but I don't know. We're going to have to wait till we shuffle it, see how it kind of holds that bend. So it definitely feels a little bit more like, again, not like a true playing card like U.S. Games, um, you know, Llewellyn, these places that make uh, tarot decks for that's their, you know, it's a big part of their publication. It's just often you get this a little bit more like cardboardy cardstock, but it feels nice in terms of like the colors pop gorgeously. It's got a nice matte finish to it, so it feels really nice. Um, I will definitely be edging this in a black Sharpie to make the, you know, all that kind of seamlessly go together. Um, but it's gorgeous. We'll see when we riffle shuffle. I have a feeling it's not going to riffle very well, but we're fine. We'll find out. We shall find out. Here's the back. Sorry. Really cool. I actually really like the backs. Circular with that. We've got the little skinny mushrooms and it is reversible. So I think the backs are fantastic. Again, the art looks absolutely stunning. Let's just get that in the middle. There we go. So let's read this. I got it on the magician again. Oh, that's right, because we decided we're going to do the magician. I don't think there's... I saw the animal and I thought, oh, there's going to be a bunch of animals. I think that that's just in the Fool, so don't get your hopes up. I really think that's just in the Fool card because the Fool has the animal companion, so I'm pretty sure that that's the case. But So we can see here we have the uh, image of the card, which is gorgeous. The mushrooms take front and center, which is wonderful. We have the, I guess would call sort of the, the normal name that we might know it by, Chicken of the, uh, of the Woods, I do know that name. And then we have the, I would assume, the Latin um, name. Now, I wish that that was in the book. I don't think... I don't think that it is. I That's a little bit small. I can read this fine. That text is a little bit small. It'd be nice to have that. I'd personally probably rather have that in here than on here, but it doesn't bother me on the card either. And then we have the name of the card. Obviously, it's borderless, and it's a satin. There is some reflectiveness of it, but it is definitely a satin. Uh, I've got the lights bouncing a little oddly here, so... Um, I, but it doesn't in person it does not feel overly reflective at all remember I bounce off the ceiling so that can change that look so um, again it gives us upright re re meanings and reverse meanings and then information about the card itself we're going to read the next one so here's a magician with the obviously the helper here um, at, this is based apparently on Rider Waite Smith meanings. I think it's going to be kind of like the Crow Tarot for me, where the Crow Tarot is a Rider Waite Smith deck, but because it's all crows, it just feels like a pip deck to me. And I feel like that because this is just all mushrooms, the same thing. I don't think that's going to get in the way in any style of reading, which is something I actually really appreciate. Um, so we'll, but we'll see if we can see any echo to the cards. Again, I do think you can see the echo of the card with obviously the fox being here. Let's just read the first part. Not the whole thing, but... Chicken of the Woods is one of the easiest mushrooms for beginner foragers to identify and is therefore a good representation of the young and innocent fool. So it is talking about how can we combine the two. Its bright orange and yellow hues stick out like a beacon in early and waning summer, forest, summer forests. Versatile in its culinary application from sandwiches to soups and generous in its medicinal value, this mushroom will offer the, the burgeoning forager a solid springboard to start their journey of becoming a mystical mycologist. Oh, I want to definitely be a mycologist. A, a mystical mycologist, uh, more importantly. You can almost see, too, like with this staff here, you can almost think about that as being over the back. You do have a little moth that's up here. Um, and then you have, it doesn't talk about the fox, but it definitely explained how, why did they pick this mushroom for this card? And I like that to see how they, they did that. So next we have the, again, the colors and the art is stunning. 
here we have the magician with little birds of the woods i'm going to read the whole thing for this one just so you can see what you get in a full um in a full um reading of the card i'm going to pull it here though so i can read it Little birds of the woods are used in divinatory ceremonies by indigenous tribes in Mexico. In the native Aztec language, I am not going to slaughter that. Uh, they are known as the divine mushroom that describes or paints. These little psychoactive mushrooms grow in subtropical tropical coffee plantations in the clay heavy soil and bruise blue, almost like magic when injured or cut. This color change echoes the magician's call for transformation and action. Upright keywords are manifestation, inspiration, and action. These small mushrooms grow among coffee crops, and coffee can help provide the jolt you need to get that project off the ground. Begin some preliminary planning to create something you feel is needed in the world. You can always adjust these plans later. For now, just take the first steps. Reversed keywords are misfortune, false visions, poor planning, creative blocks. Having trouble laying the foundation for a new project? You may feel like your mind and body are stuck in heavy, muddy soil. Have no fear. These little mushrooms thrive in a constrictive and soggy environment. Do some more research, meditate, read, or go for a walk. Ideas will germinate like spores in fertile ground. I definitely like that they are combining, you know, where it grows, the fact that it grows often with coffee, even in the meaning because it's that already that understanding that these mushrooms aren't existing in a vacuum by themselves but they are networked and connected to the energy that's around them so i actually like the way that this has been written out so that's an example of what you get um, from you don't get any medicinal values which i would like simply because i use medicinal values for magical values but again, if you're interested, then you should have a mushroom book that has mushroom medicinal values. Um, and so that's what you should be um, reaching for. This is gore. Again, the artwork is gorgeous. Here we have the high priestess with the fairy ring champion, champignon, champion, champignon. I'm not sure how to say that correctly. I feel like I've heard it before, but I'm not, I, I'm not sure how to do this. Or to say it this psychic card taps into otherworldly realms and divine knowledge these mushrooms spread their mycelium beneath a grassy area to form the ever-growing of course we all have um, ever-growing but sometimes century-old ring of fruiting bodies that can appear almost supernaturally can I, I love fairy rings ancient folklore warns that fairies and elves play within the walls of the ring it's a dangerous place for mortals to disturb Sorry, I guess we're going to read some of the uprights or some of the, these because it gives us why they're doing it. What's well, all right. You're used to me. Um, absolutely gorgeous. Again, the mushroom does apply to, so it's not just haphazardly slapped on there. So I love to see that. This is also gorgeous. This mushroom looks like, and I've seen Hen of the Woods, but the way that this is painted and everything looks like uh, even a pine cone of seeds, which is really gorgeous too. Um, looking like a mother hen underneath old oaks and maples, the hen of the woods is plentiful a plentiful food source. It's fitting that this mushroom is then connected to the empress. Um, again, I'm not going to try to read all of them, but absolutely gorgeous. Love the emperor with the fly ag agaric. Fly agaric is an iconic mushroom. Usually the very image we conjure is true, right, when we think of a mushroom. They grow large and strong and aren't afraid to flaunt their bright oranges, yellows, and reds. Colors that broadcast their toxic effect to any creature who dares to eat it. Like the Emperor card, the fly aggregate has earned respect and can teach you a lot about control and leadership and some of the deadly energy. Now look there, you've got a ram horn around that. Um, so that is interesting. I don't know if that almost... It's interesting what that is down there on the bottom. Obviously, we have the fairy ring here. But you definitely see a ram horn. That leads me to wonder if it wasn't painted. You know, it, are these mushrooms that were painted for other purposes and put onto the tarot deck? But this makes it seem as if they were painted for the tarot deck. Here we have the Hierophant. And it has a turkey tail. 
Turkey tail is a common traditional medicinal mushroom. Records indicate this incredible mushroom was used to treat illness as far back as Han the Han's dynasty in 200 BC. It grows on decaying deciduous logs in clusters of uniform looking crowns with velvet browns, golds, coppers, and sometimes blue. The Hierophant card represents traditional values, and the turkey tail mushroom can offer traditional health benefits like immune support. Again, I really like the description of why it is chosen. I've definitely seen these in old trees. Here we have Caesar's Mushroom for the Lovers. This is a vibrant and edible mushroom that bursts forth from an egg sac in late summer. Just as the lover's cards represents relationships, well, for me it's choice, but, you know. This mushroom forms a strong um, ectomycorrhizal bond with oak trees, sharing beneficial nutrients. Oh, that's really neat. So it's that sharing between the oak tree and the mushroom. That is pretty cool, and again, makes sense. Uh, choosing to work with each other also works for me. Look how beautiful my birth card is. That is gorgeous. This is the uh, conifer cone cap. Lives on dropped pine cones that tumble unrestrained across the floor's floor. Reminiscent of the movement and determination represented by the chariot card. I mean, it's just gorgeous. And it's, you can see it. It's on the um, pine cone so it can move freely and tumble about. Uh, absolutely love it. Like These art pieces are stunning absolutely stunning chaga for strength growing slowly and steadily on soft birch wood chaga is a medicinal fungus whose rock hard skin is capable of busting blades and even the sturdiest of grinders chaga is tough to harvest often requiring the use of a strong hacksaw to remove it from i don't know if i've seen this in in life when harvested it can then be transformed i'll have to look up some more pictures of it to see if I think I have seen it or not. I do always watch, and I have for a long time, watch for any types of mung, um, mungle, <laughs> mushroom and fungus I think I started to mix. I always try to watch for them, but I don't know if I've seen that or not. Here we have the artist conch uh, with the hermit, a natural canvas for the mycological artist. The pale underside of the artist conch can be used like scratch board art to create sapia toned illustrations. See, this is so amazing. Smoke from this bracket fungus has been used as insect repellent and tea from its fruiting bodies has been made into cancer fighting medicine. The hermit like humble dull brown mushroom is often found in quiet nooks and mossy crannies. That is amazing. Look at the like artist hand here. Um, there and the, the light of the hermit is on the tip of the pen that is amazing here we have the Carmen common puffball which we all know and love with the wheel of fortune the common puffball literally throws fate to the wind by releasing an incredible number of spores into the air with the hope that some will fall on fertile growing environment I love it I love the artwork I really do. I think that this is really intriguing to me. I like that the the mushrooms seem to be really chosen with care. So it does feel much more like, say, the Herb Crafters Tarot, which I also love for that. Um, but at the same time, um, because it is mushrooms, right, you, it does leave you a lot. It doesn't lock you into any kind of interpretation either. So it's quite uh, versatile in that way. Here we have the Justice card with Old Man in the Woods. Black, white, and gray scales allow this mushroom to camouflage itself into the forest floor. When cut, however, the Old Man's flesh produces a bright red, the color of passion and emotions. The Justice card deals in black and white as well, but its gray tone represents the balance between opposing forces. That is really wonderful. Look at the Hanged Man. That is gorgeous velvet shank like the tarot card is associated with this mushroom can be found hanging usually from chilly branches in the winter when most other mushrooms are dormant i don't believe i've ever seen this before that is amazing again it makes you want to go and get you know really look up um also live images not to say that these aren't gorgeous but just to see you know if you've maybe seen this before and didn't realize it 
here we have the death card with the destroying angel. This is a beautiful yet very toxic mushroom that emerges from a protective egg-like sac. The destroying angel is a beacon white summer sight. This mushroom transforms from a stubby armor button into an elegant bone pale creature holding its own on the roofless forest floor. Really cool. Look at that little turtle. A little ladybug too. There's cardinal. So there are some other things. Um, there's a dragonfly, almost like a spirit though. These seems like more like fae, fairies. Um, obviously we have the ram horn there. We have a feathers kind of falling here and obviously other plants as well. We have what looks like snakes or worms or something around that one. I love the background of that. Again, we have that hand figure there and the stick. We've got like a little lizard here and some kind of ghosty energy, spirit energy. Um, other things here. Obviously, we have the tree branch. We have a little turtle. We have that. We have the cardinal. So there are other forest energies. But I will say the mushrooms really do stand out absolutely firmly in place. Here we have the temperance with the shiitake, so named for growing under a she, I don't know if that's pronounced right, tree logs for cultivation. This is an ancient medicinal and culinary medicine. The health benefits of this show the practical versatility of the balanced mushroom, while it can be also used to create delicious dishes. Creation and destruction both are balanced in temperance. Oh, look at the devil. Here is the lobster mushroom. The lobster mushroom is a result of a parasitic fungus that takes over the fruiting body of certain nearby mushrooms. This devilish act changes the shape and taste of ordinary bland white mushrooms into textured orange delicacies. Likewise, the devil card warns us that looks can be deceiving. That is awesome. I think that's an amazing one to utilize for the devil. Here we have the tower with the yellow netted stink horn, stink born, sorry. It's quite a sight, even more quite a smell. This phallic tower shaped mushroom releases a foul goo full of spores that attract flies who disperse them as they fly away. The stink horn explodes from the ground with a force that can crack pavement, then decays into a horrific puddle, capturing the essence of the tower. Oh, poor tower card. I feel like the tower card kind of gets hit hard by this one. I, I really enjoy the tower card. I know it's destructive, but it just, you know, it, it understands that we have to keep moving along despite destructive forces. Um, it doesn't have much of the pick up and shake it off at the end, except for with the flies taking them away to spread and start new life, I guess. <laughs> um, that's the tower. <clears throat> Here we have the store, star, oh my goodness, the star card with the golden reishi. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correct either. It's one of those words I see all the time, but I, I don't know if I uh, am saying it correctly. This colorful medicinal mushroom is heralded for its adaptogenic ben benefits as an immune system modulator. See, it helps your body adapt to environmental stressors. The tower happened, the star comes, allows you to adapt, and now you can continue to move forward and navigate. That's wonderful. I love the combination of those two. Here we have, I love jack-o'-lanterns. Uh, I, this is an Eastern jack-o'-lantern. From a distance, a gathering of these mushrooms looks like a cornucopia of chanterlees or delicious chicken of the woods mushrooms. However, look again, jack-o'-lanterns are toxic but beautiful, so you have to look closely. Don't rely on your senses, but look deeper and trust your instincts and your intuition. Definitely leans into the deception side of the moon energy. Beautiful sun, golden oyster mushrooms, beautiful warm weather mushrooms that smell of watermelons and taste like cashews. I've never had those. Golden oyster mushrooms are like sunshine growing from decaying hardwood. That is amazing. I um, love mushrooms in concept and as like plant 
whatever as fungus and fungi I'm not a huge like I don't love to eat them I don't mind eating them they're just not my absolute favorites <laughs> um, so um, I like them in things but I'm like not somebody that's just gonna take a big old chomp of a mushroom I like them mixed into things prefer them to be cooked but I enjoy mushrooms as what they are and hunting for them. Here we have the judgment card with corpse binder. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Reported to have brought a crime to light when a gathering of these mushrooms fruited over buried human remains. The corpse binder gets its rather gruesome name because of the release of nitrogen from decaying mammal is what causes it to appear. The judgment card need not refer to a sordid court case, however. It can call to mind judgments made by or about you or upcoming choices. <laughs> I like that description. And then... Uh, for the last of the major arcana and I will promise to speed up here we have the world card um, and we have the honey mushroom this again the imagery is is just stunning uh, the world record holder for largest and possibly oldest living organisms is the honey mushroom which lives in Oregon's blue mountains at its youngest estimation the 2400 year old mushroom covers nearly four square miles and its massive underground network of mycelium encompasses several mountain tops honey mushrooms fruiting bodies peek out from the bark of dying trees as a reminder of its achievement which is the world's car's message as well that is absolutely amazing and i will now have to go look up more about that so that um that's the major arcana again 100 percent love what they've done here i think that the choices feel smart they smell me oh my gosh the words today why am i doing a walkthrough i don't know um they feel smart they feel applicable they feel intentional and purposeful and that's often what sometimes doesn't always hit the mark when mixing things like plants animals and other types of specific things that they are trying to mix in with the system of tarot it always feels to me not always it often feels like one or the other miss is is reduced by the connection but in this case, I actually don't feel like that. I actually feel like it hits you with different ways to think about the tarot card. And I think the tarot card actually helps me to think about the mushroom and what it does. So I actually, so far, I feel I got somebody who maybe is much more in, knowledgeable about mushrooms might, um, you know, have uh, other opinions. Please share those in the comments. But for me, it, it seems like a really good fit. So I'm gonna, again, try to speed things up here. Um, so let's just take a look. So, the okay, look at the miners have this little border on the top. We don't have that in, oops, sorry. I know I'm way zoomed in, now you can't see. The, the majors do not. So it looks like that's gonna help us, which is nice, to stand apart. There's the wands with the fiery um, at the top. We have cups with that kind of purpley blue color. Um, here we have the swords with more of a true uh, whites and uh, pinkish colors. And then we have the uh, pentacles with the green here um, as well. So uh, you have both, a, it looks like a, like a plant. Um, maybe those, I don't think those are mushrooms. It looks like a plant. Uh, specific plants also that go we'll look and see if it says anything about that but I like how they've done that to kind of make it clear when you lay your cards out you're gonna really see your suits which I enjoy with uh, when decks do that so that's that's pretty cool let me take a peek and see um, I don't see where it talks about whatever plant that is on the oh here's wands so it gives you a nice little section about the wands uh, and what it represents they're illustrated with mushrooms and fungi influenced by heat or see this is what i'm saying i feel like this is very smartly done or directly affected by fire as well as the colors or luminescence synonymous with burning embers such as oranges and reds um, watching over the wands in this deck is the salamander, a classic symbol of fire with their bright colors. Car and da, 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 da. Folklore says, blah, 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 blah. I'm just trying to see if it talks about the plant uh, on here, but I don't see that. 
other than that's a sunflower. Oh, so it's going into each of them. The cups, uh, mushrooms, why they chose those mushrooms. I'm seeing if there's an animal as well. Water and spite illustrations appear as shells. Uh, there, in this deck, cap, cups, mushrooms rely on or celebrate water as an essential element for their prosperity. Uh, air uh, collects mushrooms that require or related to the element of air to ensure their survival. Spores require a breeze. You'll notice bird symbolism here as well. And then pentacles are again and things that are hidden buried these types of things and there will be gemstones and crystals peppered throughout this suit i mean again i really love what the creator has done here so i'm going to try to to speed it up because you know i i just should so um starting with the ace uh we have the burn moral uh, this overrules any negatives. Okay, so let me just see. On the miners, is it still going to talk about the mushroom? Yes. Burn morals rise from the forest floor, scorched earth to fruit into creatively shaped harbingers of an upcoming mushroom feast. So it is giving you, obviously you're getting a little bit less because you have a full page with these where this is sharing the image and that. So you get a little bit less, uh, which is usually typical. But it is still touching into a the card that what the card means and b why they're using the mushroom so i quite love that for the two we have the bleeding tooth fungus oh, this is so interesting uh, studies show that this mushroom contains the anticoagulant atromentin as well as Thalithoric acid, a potential treatment for Alzheimer's disease. I'm definitely going to read. This is one of those I am 100% going to read through the guidebook, but I know I need to keep going. Um, bleeding tooth fungus. Cedar apple rust for the three of wands. Have we seen? I see something flying kind of back here. Almost like there's a forest fire going on in the back. We see mountains in the back. These transfer between apple and cedar host trees. This is a card of travel. The Three of Wands um, is a card of travel for the Rider Waite Smith. Again, so this doesn't really get in the way of my sort of uh, feeding. Oh, look at that image. Oh, I love this. Four of Wands, Birch Polypore. Stability is the theme of this card. It's a well well-regarded form of ancient medicine that was found in a knapsack of a 5,000 year old alpine mummy in 1991 that shows some time-honored stability but look I don't know if you can see this I'm gonna look in the look at like the ghosts here I love this card stabilizing the the gateway between the physical world and the other world i found that, i like that card that one i could really see going as an amazing oracle card that's pretty cool uh five of wands orange pinwheel you must stand strong and with purpose even when things are trying to smother your blaze it's gorgeous look at this one look at the like fire ants i bet red chantilly a departure from what you are familiar with can be scary, but can deliver great rewards. This is a spicier cousin of the common golden one. Absolutely gorgeous. Here we look at that. Eternal light mushrooms for the seven of wands. This card showcases your strength. You've completed your goal with flair. Constant criticism can make you feel tiny and hollow. But like the eternal light mushrooms, you should glow with pride that you have come so far. Eight of wands. with That does look like coral, doesn't it? They grow quickly and do not redirect their wand-like spires for any obstacle. Again, kind of going with the Rider Waite Smith. Um, uh, I look at the eight as much more about mastering and really honing in and focusing and not being deterred. So I, that works for me as well. 
Here we have a Nine of Wands, uh, Poison Fire Coral. Again, these are gorgeous mushrooms. Um, as a notorious poisonous mushroom, the Poison Fire Coral illustrates the feelings of anxiety that come with this card. Learn from this fragile mushroom and brazenly display your strength against adversity by using tools that have protected you thus far. Um, that's gorgeous. Here we have the um, Ten of Wands with the blackening wax caps. Refreshing rain clouds are on the way, a welcome sign, as this sign card can signify, sig signify burnout or that heaviness and that weight. Um, again, I don't necessarily read it that way. Um, for me, tens are the culmination of the suit of fire and holding strong in even if there is that heaviness and that weight there. And this doesn't, you know, this doesn't change anything for me as well. Here we have our court cards now. We have the pink burn cap for the page of wands. Represents renewal in precious bright pink gathering. Their appearance brings with them the chance of a flush of desirable burn morals. Here we have the knight of wands. Look at that growing in the skull. Um, I wonder if all the knights, let's just see. I'm just curious. Mm, nope, but we do have a snail. Sorry, I know you're, I'm, I'm making it so that you're going to peek. But and there we have, a, oh, that's kind of sad. I don't know, I guess he's probably not dead. I hope he's not dead. The Knight of Swords. And then, yes, yeah, so there's, there's a creature it looks like. Yep, there's a creature it looks like in each one of the knights. Sorry. <laughs> Knight of Wands. Sorry, we're gonna we're gonna move. I promise. The gorgeous Queen of Wands with luminescent luminescent Pinellas. Sure, I'm slaughtering that. The wine cap for the King of Wands and the Salamander there. Moving us to the cups. Look at all that water. You can feel the water, even though we're looking at mushrooms. Ace of Cups with fluted bird nest fungus. The indigo milk cap with the two of cups. So, and look at the cattails. You can see even water running behind it. The three of cups with the stocked scarlet cup. Look how it can hold cups like a cup. Sorry, I'm just I'm just gonna try to move. Um, white basket fungus again. It's a container with the four of cups. Look at the the wind really hold. You know, uh, four of cups for me is steady um holding your emotions steady and being protected and even while winds are blowing so visually again I, for me i think this is going to function very much like I, as i learn more about the mushrooms on here i feel like it's going to be like an animal and plant deck where that plant and that fungus can come that mushroom can come in and give me extra information to impart about the card but if i want to just use it straight it's just you know a five of cups is a five of cups is a five of cups to me i don't it, does, it can just have the name on it, it doesn't matter for me in how i'm going to interpret the main message so I, it's just going to add that extra benefit and in that way it can work really beautifully as both do you want to lean into the meaning of the mushroom um, and or do you just want to get in there and read then it's just a beautiful backdrop for your reading so I quite again I like decks that give us space like that and um, I think that this is really working beautifully um, ink stain foliates often appear solitary and at the mercy of hungry slugs their natural bright yellow flesh will flush a deep blue when injured which is how you might feel when you see the five of cups even the death uh, deepest hued bruises will fade though and when recovered yes yeah, I mean again even in the minors from what I've been skimming they it feels so intentional and I absolutely love that five of cups Six of Cups with the Pixie's Parasol. I love the name of that and the look of that. Seven of Cups with the Black Trumpet. Eight of Cups with the Shaggy Ink Cap. Let's see, Eight of Cups. Um, 
I wonder if this is a journeying. This card announces a departure. Da, 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 da. Emotionally prepare yourself. Da, 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 da. The shaggy ink cap delicacies liquefies itself after secreting a black spore filled liquid in order for the species to continue on. Things get a little sticky. Departure, natural endings, travel. I wondered if this was going to be like one that would t take you on a um, psychedelic journey, just because that would be interesting with the Eight of Cups. For me, anyways. Nine of Cups, we have the water cap of the water club mushroom, partially submerged in slow moving water. And here we have the beautiful Ten of Cups. You can definitely see the uh, hint or echo to the Rider Waite Smith card with the Portobello. Portobellos are popular mushrooms for eating thanks to their hearty flavor and ample size. The brown and white button cream eye juvenile forms of the portobellos are also popular in the kitchen which is true reflecting this card's theme of familiar bounce he's got both the little ones and the full size ones so that's pretty cool there as well on to our quartz we have the page of cups with the blue pink gull pink gill we do see what looks to be like a little a frog here Oh, I bet. and then we have a snail in the Knight of Cups with the purple Lasseria. We have a gorgeous shell here with the Queen of Cups. And then with the King of Cups, I don't know if this is supposed to be something. Let me see if it says. This card signifies stable intersection of emotions and impulses. Like its cousin, the bold fly agarit seen on the Emperor card, the vertigrous agarit reigns over the forest floor, but with a more subdued aura. Its color and vibe are cooler, but no less commendable. Again, it ties then the king into with the emperor, which is fantastic as well. It definitely makes you feel as if the creator knows mushrooms and also knows tarot very well, which isn't always the case, but in this case, it feels like it. So this leads me us uh, to the Ace of Swords. I wonder if all of the I haven't noticed. I think they are. Well, sorry, this is how my brain goes. Yeah. So the Ace has the hand in it, like the traditional Rider Waite Smith, and and older decks. Um. Oh yeah. There's the Ace in the Ace of Cups. And then obviously we'll see that in the pentacles as well. So you definitely get that ace standing out in that way. Uh, I like the uh, rings that kind of look like the cups and a fire jewel. Or just like a jewel. I think they're kind of like a ring. And then we've got the swords here. So this is the parasol. Um... This ace indicates that you can overcome any obstacles in your way. The parasol mushroom soars above other fungi in the terms of stature as well as edibility. edibility. Open your mind and release your ideas like spores from this commendable vantage. I love that for the ace of swords. Here we have the two of swords crossed. You can get that crossed feel. Um, these are the piggyback rose gill. It's a rare white parasitic mushroom that flourishes primarily on the caps of decaying clouded funnel mushrooms. It's a good fit with this card, which indicates an intersection of ideas that can create a polarizing situation or battle of wills. I like that description, actually, of the Two of Swords. Here we have the Three of Swords. Again, we do have that indication of the typical three of swords obviously this to me is much better than many three of swords in Rider Waite Smith because it doesn't uh, fit with the growth here this is the false moral brain like twisted versions of the sought after edible morals false morals are cripplingly poisonous similar to the three of swords unfortunate message their dense meaty stalks crouch among conifers as opposed to the light hollow stalks of the edible variety which prefer a deciduous habitat um so again i don't read the three of um 
swords this way it, it was about learning from our experiences and so I can really go here with this because if the um, this is a false moral right and once I realize that and I've picked that wrong mushroom thinking it was the regular moral I'm going to learn from that experience and do something different so that works for me as well here we have the four of swords with the snow fungus um, it can grow large, but it's deceptively fragile. The energy used to create a monument must be strong and steady to ensure a structure with the same qualities. Rest efficiently. Beautiful. Here we have the Five of Swords. Again, I really like the ghost people. I wonder if it's kind of like, you know to the mushroom everything is kinetic connected and so when we see like we see the one like now I can't remember which one it was yeah here we go the four of wands we have all of this energy going on here and I think oh you know those are ghosts or something but it makes me wonder if like that would be how we might be seen energetically you know when we think about an energetic connecting of everything that those are just people that are hiking or memories of people and holding those memories that's kind of cool i kind of like the way that the people are kind of shown that way and i don't think they're meant to be ghosts like i was excited about but i really like that sorry five of swords Six of Swords, here we have the Aquatic Guild Mushrooms. Again, you do have that kind of movement feel here with the water of Six of Swords. The Seven of Swords is the Amethyst Deceiver. Now, I love the Seven of Swords. I had a really hard, I always say this, I, already had, I really had a hard time with the Seven of Swords right away at Smith because it didn't match up with my cardamancy understanding of a Seven. Um, com coming into trying to learn the Rider Waite Smith after already reading Tarot in a different way. Um, beautiful but deceptive, like the Seven of Swords theme. The Amethyst Deceiver mushrooms itself. Mushroom by itself is an edible fungus. However, it readily absorbs absorbs poisonous arsenic from the surrounding soil. So I still like this because the way that I read the Seven of Swords is that you've got to get the whole picture. You've got to go deeper so that you can have the information that's going to then allow that new growth to come. So this works beautifully. It looks like it's edible and it could be edible but you better get more information before you um, eat it so that's wonderful again I really find these to be extremely smart eight of swords the columned stink horn rise out of an underground egg sac into a smelly alien looking cluster of tentacles my goodness the poor eight of swords but it does have that trap feel and then we've got that uh fly that's here that can obviously fly away like the eight of swords remember to break through self-imposed blind blinders to appreciate resources around you here we have the nine of swords with the blushing milk cap this is a card of anxiety caused by trauma mm, i find it to be about stress because of high mental energy going on these grow primarily around weeping willow trees a symbol a symbol in historic graveyards representing grief sadness and pain um almost anthropomorphically milk caps wheat weep white latex from their gills when injured so having to be careful is high energy and things can cut um you know, again very workable and then we have my bane of existence right in the, in the right away smith system with the ten of swords ten for me is the number of completion and it just comes to the fullness of it um, so let's see, I know what the right away Smith meaning is, so let's look at the actual mushroom. The reproductive phase of the anemone stink horn looks and smells like a struggle has ended violently, but there's poignant peace within the dramatic scene. Interesting. I'll have to look more up on that one. But again, this doesn't really get in my way of working it the way I want. That's a gorgeous page of swords. I know I have to speed it up. Deadly. Uh, deadly gallerina pay attention that is a beautiful image 
Here we have the Knight of Swords. I hope that Knight's not being stabbed. The most energetic card embodies extreme brazen survival tactics. Like a knight in armor, the zombie ant fungus infests and uses the hijacked corpse of its victim as its armor and mobility to propagate. That is a zombie mushroom for the knight of swords. I cannot help but like that, even, even though it's doing my swords a little rough. <laughs> Queen of Swords lions made mushrooms are royally positioned in the realm of medicinal fungi, known for promoting nerve regeneration and the production of healthy brain cells. I love that. This mushroom represents an independent spirit that effectively shares our idea. I love that. Love that. King of Swords with the dragonfly. Kingly decomposer, the destructive felosi destructive felota breaks down decaying wood efficiently. This is a large mushroom that bursts from the cracks of aspen and poplar logs like a butterfly from a cocoon, which is also a traditional totem for the King of Swords. I mean, I'm not opposed to any of this. And here we have, lastly, the uh, Ace of the Pentacles. So we have the uh, Ace of Pentacles with the Paracord Truffle. Very expensive. That makes sense. Here we have the Two of Pentacles with the Barometer Earth, store, Earth Star. I love that name. It's able to thrive by making instinctual decisions in regard to its surrounding weather, moisture, sunlight, and the seasons, keeping all factors expertly in check. So it's really balancing things. Love that. Three of Pentacles, the Green Elf Cup. different elements as if assembled by hand of a skilled craftsperson uniting them harmonized like a work of art. Wow, that is so interesting. Okay, sorry, I can't read all these. Like, I am definitely going to go through myself and read these all. It's so fascinating to me. Here we have the King Oyster for the Four of Pentacles, Security, um, which I like the idea. I, I use Security for the Four in its upright position. Um, and I do like that the overspending and materialism in is in its reverse position because that would really be how I would look at it as well. Here we have the Five of Pentacles with the Devil Cigar. The rare Devil Cigar is found only in a couple of small habitats worldwide. These mushrooms pop open with an audible hiss, throwing off a puff of spores to spread. Deforestation threatens the species. Its vulnerability makes it appropriate for the. You got to be careful. It's not a time to. Uh, because your resources are being thrown all over the place. So that's pretty cool. Here we have the Six of Pentacles. The Prince is a mushroom known for its bounteous size and sweet almond smell. The spores from the Prince produce a royal purple or chocolate brown spore print used in identifying this generously fruitful fungi. It's a good match for the Six of Pentacles, which represents generosity. The Dune Cap for the Seven of Pentacles, because uh, buried under, for most of its life, it's buried under sand, and then it explodes. Sand, so you have to wait for it. It's about perseverance and appreciation for hard-earned results. Makes sense. Here we have the Blob for the Eight of Pentacles. This card encourages you to pursue hobbies that you're passionate about. Able to make its own decisions and solve mazes. The Blob teaches us, I've got to look that mushroom up. Like all of these mushrooms are so fascinating to me. Knight of Pentacles with the Wood, Blewood, 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 not sure how to say that. Um, so shrouded in hues of royal purple at the peak of their life, wood blewits have historically and confusingly been used in a green textile dye and are a reward for steadfast late season mushroom foragers. Covered in royal and prosperity colored robes, the Nine of Pentacles celebrates luxury from financial stability earned by hard work. Oh, this, see how beautiful is that Ten of Pentacles? This is a branch Calibia. This small fungus grows in large clusters surrounded in a protective familiar cornucopio 
reminiscent of the Ten of Pentacles, which represents family and continual generation. That is pretty cool. I love that. Ten of Pentacles. Here's our page with the hedgehog mushroom. Too cute. Our knight with the white truffle. Our queen of pentacles with the elegant earth star. And our king of pentacles with the king. Again, there's lots of crystals and gems in the suit of pentacles. Um, with the king bolette. These are absolutely amazing. So, obviously, I will need to take the time to work with this lovely deck, but, and I will be, I'm, it's fascinating to me. It is, for me so far, again, I'm not a mushroom expert, not a bad shuffle, definitely a bit of a cardboardy feel. I don't, that's not, I don't know if that's quite fair to say, but yes, I would say it's kind of like a cardboardy feel. You can see how it's already bent. It was like that when I got it. Um, and it's just going to hold any, like if you're a riffle shuffler like me, it's going to hold that bend that you might use to riffle. Um, but I still riffle them. Just I'm just aware that the edges are probably going to get a little bit more dinged up so i will definitely but then you cover it with the black and you can always refresh that later on as well um yeah so for me so far and again i have no expert on mushrooms even though i'm fascinated by them i will definitely be picking up i've got i think at home i've got a I think I have one, but I, I need to pick up a better medicinal or, you know, what are the different properties of all the mushrooms? Because again, I use that for, in plants, I use that for how do I look at those plants energetically and magically, so I need to do the same. But, um, so, so again, I ha can't compare this to any knowledge that I have of, of mushrooms, but it feels, like I said about the Herb Crafters um, Tarot, which is the one t uh, uh, plant one that I feel like is so beautifully, so intentionally, the herbs uh, or the plant supports the card and the card gives us a look into the plant. This feels that way to me. And so that is exciting. That's really exciting. I'm just going to, I know that this is um, quite probably at least I feel like this is probably way too long of a video um, <laughs> I just want to lay them out so that you can see them and then again this the next part of this is that I feel like um, so yes all those things like I think it looks very intentional it looks like the mushrooms themselves will give me added information to utilize in a reading as why that mushroom came up but I also feel like because it's mushrooms just like with the crow tarot I can also really utilize this and I don't feel hemmed in at all by right away Smith uh, uh, things or even the mushrooms themselves um, I don't really feel hemmed in by them so in any many ways it can my base meanings as I read stay there and then I can use the mushrooms to enhance that and I quite love that um, about these types of ducks that give you something that really works beautifully but at the same time doesn't really lock you into any particular way of reading i know i'm zoomed in but i had this is the next morning and i have a class about to start and so i've got stuff all around but i still wanted to be able to finish this up and just they're gorgeous now i don't have this deck the, the other deck that i'm going to talk about with me but my thought when I picked this up at Books A Million is that I think this might be really wonderful to use with the Glowwood Oracle um, that I've really wanted to deep dive into. I have a walkthrough of that elsewhere, but I haven't really taken the time to deep dive long into it other than the initial time. So I'm thinking in this fall that this uh, tarot and that, those two decks I think might actually be amazing together. So so I'll, I'll have to do a different video on that after I play around with it. Again, I will be definitely edging, edging these in a black Sharpie marker because that's my favorite for black. 
um, I will 100% be doing that. But I hope that you've enjoyed this. Uh, hats off, in my opinion. Again, I'm not an expert on mushrooms, but hats off to Sarah Richard. Um, a, the artwork, absolutely stunning. Like, there's nothing that you could want for her. Um, I like the, the being able to see by these borders. The suits that are there standing out from the majors that have none. Um, so, I just everything about this. There's an, I love the way this has been set up. And the choices seem absolutely fantastic. And aiding on both directions. So, uh, I have to really give some hats off credit to the creator here this seems to be very smart and is absolutely gorgeous look at that love it love it love it okay i hope you've enjoyed this walkthrough and that you have a wonderful rest of your day